Right. After the usual backpedaling, fast, getting ready to go live in the group, I can now confirm that I'm going live in the group. We're recording. We've got my special guest here, Harold, Hank, or you, all work when you wouldn't need to address Harold. Um, he's actually one of the inspirational people behind this workshop because I spend 99% of my time talking to people pleasers, talking to women. And I also work with um, a bunch of lads called the Gladiator Mastermind. And with them, um, I do mindset coaching for people in business. And it was literally hit me like a lightning bolt last week. What about people pleasers in business? And I've invited Harold to come along to this because there's a lot of stuff that I've taught him directly um, that you guys are going to benefit from. So I just thought it might be fun for Harold to be here. Now, on your worksheet, which is one of these purple framed numbers, there's a little bit of pre-work to do before we dive into the presentation. And this is so that you can figure out where you are. And the most important thing that crops up or, or the most destructive thing, actually, it's not important, it's destructive. The most destructive thing that crops up with just about everybody who I talk to in business is imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome can turn up in so many different ways. It can be, um, I'm not good enough. My idea is awful. Um, it can be... Um, I'm scared to go live. Yeah. It can be, I look so old when I'm on camera. Yeah. All of those things can create what appears to be a new creation of imposter syndrome. All right. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is we are all hardwired with this. Every single person on the planet is born an imposter. And what we do is we learn to overcome it. If you look at a baby, they have no perception of the world outside their little universe they are the center of that universe and when we rather cruelly in my opinion send our kids off to school yeah that's when the judgment really starts they're taken out of the center of their universe put into a school and they're then judged and compared and graded that's where most of the human race's problems begin Homeschooling is still, I think, the best way to go. Homeschooling, but with shared groups. So the way I would do it is like, you know, four or five parents all get together and the kids move from home to home to home. So they're always taught in a home. They're always taught by a parent. <laughs> and this allows kids to grow up <clears throat> without this you're not good enough thing. Yeah. So what I do with all of my clients and a lot of the Gladiator Mastermind clients is one of the first things I do is I try and dismantle the um, judgment that has been put inside our brains by our society and by our schooling. So the first thing I'd like you to think about is where did you first get the idea that you were not good enough? Who first told you you can do better? Who first gave you a mark out of 10 for something? Who first said to you, nice try, but you can do it better next time? Where did you first hear that judgment? And if you're watching it on the replay and you need more time, pause now and have a really good think about where that came from. It could have been a parent, a teacher, a neighbor, an older child even. yeah. But see if you can figure out where it first came from for you. And then knowing that, knowing that at that point in time, you were taught to judge yourself. How does it show up in your life now? A lot of people pleasers see it as a constant drive that they have within them to perform, to do the best they can, to do better than everybody else in order to please a person, 
you know, a boss, a husband, a father, or um, a wife or a mother. Yeah, there's like this key person. So see if you can figure out how that judgment folds over into the future days of your life from when it first turned up. Who is your harshest uh, judger, for want of a better word? In most cases, we are our own worst enemy. We are our own hardest judgment. And we are the ones who put targets on our lives that are either just out of reach so we constantly feel like we're failing yeah or wildly out of reach so that we cultivate a fear of success there has been at least two occasions to the best of my memory when i have asked harold are you afraid of success or afraid of failure and on both of those occasions i got different answers according to my notes the first time we spoke, he had a fear of failure because all of the thoughts in his head were, I, I really know my stuff, but I'm just going to fail at this. This is just too hard. You know, what I'm being asked to do is just too hard. There's, there's all these different people telling me all of these different ways. of the, And this piling on of pressure on himself yeah, has come from a point in his life. So. What are you not doing in your life because of the belief that you are either going to fail or going to succeed? Yeah. What are those weird beliefs, those abstract beliefs that are so far outside of yourself? It's usually untrue. Yeah. But those beliefs that you're not good enough, that what you have is not worth the money you're asking. Yeah, that so many other people can do whatever it is you're doing so much better than you can do it. Yeah. What are you not doing because of those self-inflicted fears? And again, if I'm going too fast for you on the replay, just pause and dive into these questions. They're the first four questions on page one. The last one is. You will, you will have noticed by now in the three previous answer, answers that there's a theme. I can't tell you what that theme is because we're all the same in that we are unique. Yeah. And the individual little twists of time are going to create a belief for you that could be very similar to another person or very different. But once you've got that belief, I want you to honestly ask yourself, is this belief true? Yeah. And those four words, is this belief true, are going to be massive for you. Especially when you pair them up with the next four words. Is it really you? Is the judgment that you've created really true? And is it true of you? Yeah. I used to have a belief that um, it wouldn't really matter how much stuff I did on social media, that no one would ever watch, no one would ever subscribe, no one would ever do anything. Yeah. Well, I've decided that the answer to that question for me is irrelevant. Yeah. I have taught myself, seriously, beware for expletives, they're coming up, right? I have taught myself not to give a shit. Yeah, I've taught myself how not to give a shit. Because, quite frankly, when I create content, I do it because of the love of it. Because I want to do it. Because if I create, you know, like, like I've literally just published my 36th episode of my podcast. I've been doing it every week since March. And I think I've got like three people subscribed to the channel. Um, and the most listens I've had to one episode was, I think, 
seven or eight unique listeners. Yeah. My I do not give a shit policy means that out of all 36 episodes, out of all of the unique listens, out of all of the people who listen live when it's broadcast on the radio, yeah, out of all of those people, if all of that effort changes the life or changes a moment for one person, it's a success. Because I'm in charge of my life. And my definition of success is what's going to count. Now, right at the end of this workshop, the very last question in this three-page worksheet, the very last question is where we get you to that point, where you ask the answer the question, um, you decide what success looks like for you. Because you're the only person who decides. Sometimes Harold here comes onto a call with a gladiator mastermind and, and he's like, right, I've done 200 outreaches and I've done, you know, 100 of these and 100 of those. And there's this coming in and there's that coming in and I've done the study and I've done this. And, I've, and, and what I hear is him achieving according to his own definition of success. Yeah. Now, if his definition of success was 200 outreaches, then he succeeded. If his definition of success was over the course of a month, he wanted to reach out to 500 new people and he does 200 in the first week. Yeah, he's rocking it according to his own definition of success. Because if I tell him that 200 is too many or that 200 is not enough, if I tell him he should be doing at least 500 new conversations every single week in order to meet his goals, right, then, you know, he's big enough and ugly enough to either look at me and say, now, nah, two, 200 a week is, is fine, because while I do 200 a week, I enjoy it. If I do 500 a week, yeah, OK, maybe I'll meet my goals, but maybe my goals are too big. Yeah. Maybe I'm reaching too far too soon. Maybe I'm going too hard too soon. But he's only learned how to do that by learning that he is the person who decides what is success. So I'm going to share the screen on and off during this presentation um, because I just want to go through a couple of slides with you to make sure that we're off on the right track. Because anyway, and I'm not I'm not going to do like the whole you know share screen thing and make it take up the whole screen because. Uh, I want to do it like this. So this first slide, this workshop is going to contain practical skills to support people pleasers in business. That's my target audience, but that's not necessarily while Harold is here, why Harold is here. I don't think he's a people pleaser. I think he pushes himself too hard sometimes. I think the only person he's interested in pleasing, to be quite honest with you, is himself. Yeah. He gives himself targets. But that's why I've invited him, because these are sticky patches that every people pleaser or get this perfectionist CEO goes through. Yeah. If you if you set yourself up as a perfectionist. Yeah. That's where you define what success means to you. And Harold, you're going to see that this is very familiar. This is almost the same as the presentation that I gave or this slide, almost the same as the slide that I presented at the Gladiator Mastermind Intensive event in September. But because I'm focusing on people pleasers, the breakdown is different. To take someone from imposter to confidence, you still need to focus on systems because there's no point in having leads coming in if you haven't got a system to convert them. And we're also going to cover the truth about no, which are, again, two things that we covered in the Gladiator Mastermind thing of me just do it section this is about making a plan and following it this is also going to be familiar step change this is like a staircase principle and work planning and before we go any further i'm going to click onto this slide everyone thinks in business that they need leads if you have no system to convert them you're just pouring your money down the drain so 
for your business reality, you need to be able to have a system that tracks your customer interactions. So I'm going to ask Harold to unmute yourself. Oh, you already have. OK, let's stop this share. Stop this share for a second because I want to talk to Harold. If I go to gallery, I'm not sure what it does. So I'm going to pin us both. There we go. So, Harold, how do you track your customer interactions? So a um, little bit of ADHD. So I do um, I use Trello. It's like a free uh -huh. um, system. It's like Excel, but it lets you drag. So you could set up columns to uh -huh. set up uh, initial contact you know, whatever, and you can move them along. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. But I also, what I do, believe it or not, I don't know if I could find it quickly, is I just, I, I print out the important ones uh -huh. and I keep them on my desk. So when I walk in in the morning, in case my head's, I don't know where, in the gym or somewhere, I see mm -hmm. them on my desk. And then I remember, oh yeah, you know, and I, yeah. and I look at it. So it, it, so it helps you, me. That That enables you to track how many outreaches you're doing and how many people come back to you? The, the, the outreaches are sort of done in LinkedIn. You get to see how many you did. I, I mean, uh -huh. if, you, if you really need to sort of, but the, the, the important ones, I think with gravity are the ones that have responded, right? Those are like, yeah. so you get so to the, see so all the bigger that, the bigger that pile of paper gets on your desk that, that defines how well you're doing. That, that defines uh, how many conversations I've had. Mm -hmm. um, one pile will be maybe there was a proposal made. There's some potential. One is there's a follow up. You know, there's, mm -hmm. so there's a few different piles, I guess. And mm -hmm. it, it's almost the same in my Trello. So it's uh, outreach to follow up, another call happening. You know, potential uh, business. So it's it's yeah. pretty cool. It's uh, it, what I like about it is you. I can show you just, you just, you, you click on it, you move things around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I've, I, I've got a system that's just like that too. Yeah, It's, it's not Trello, know, but it's a, it's a different system. If I haven't made it to the uh, advanced. Eventually like there's, we have some things and there's some amazing stuff out there that um, I think it's similar, but it's more automated to what we do. Like mm. you click and it moves it along, but that's hopefully that's the next, you know, one of the next levels in, in a little bit. Absolutely. So it's it's good to know that you have that method. I'm going to unpin you. Oh my gosh. If I didn't have that, I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> You'd lose your already just, scattered brain. Just, just to come in on Monday and remember that I have that on Friday is a win. You know? so. <laughs> oh dear. Cool. Looking, looking at it <laughs> once a day is like a miracle. You know? so. But at least, at least so they're those, there. You know? Yeah. Those, those systems are what help most people. I mean, my, my mind is a little bit out there and Harold's mind is a little bit out there, but at a minimum, when you're in business, you need to be able to track either inquiries that come in or outreaches out and how many of them turn into sales. If you don't track anything else, effort versus sales is the thing you need to track. Yeah. Because if you don't track that, you could find yourself at any one moment burnt out in a heap on the floor, not knowing that you're this far away from the next sale. And the way that works is that if you have, say, I'm just trying to think of something quite close to mine. For, for in, in terms of outreaches, for, for every kind of 50 or 60 messages that I send out, I have probably half of them turn into reasonably well-balanced conversations. And from then I'll get five or six calls booked um, and out of them, maybe one or two of them get offered my program. And that's where I let it go. I don't count how many people actually say yes to the program because that's a them thing. That's not a me thing. My effort is what I choose to track. But um, it's going to be different for everybody because, you know, I'm I'm in business for myself. But the this, this is the slide that I want everybody to see, right? Prospects are going to say no. But what very few people teach is how important it is to say no yourself. Yeah. 
So you've really got to shy away from that. The the difficulty is that when someone comes to you, yeah, they may come to you with this whole, I need what you've got. I need what you've got. I want what you've got. I want yeah, but they don't actually want to do the work and they don't want to pay for it. Yeah. And if they're not all four of these things, all four of them, they are not an ideal client for me. So in addition to, are they a people pleaser? Um, are they struggling with those people please tendencies are they aware even if it's only distanced that there's a connection between trauma and their trauma response yeah it's all of that stuff but there's also these four things because it doesn't matter how amazing my program is and it doesn't matter how how messed up an individual is if they don't want what i've got if they don't need what i've got if they're not willing to do the work and they're not able to pay for my services, then they're not an ideal client for me. Which means that I say no almost as much as my clients say no, or should I say potential clients say no. Yeah, It's really, really close to 50-50. For the number of offers that I make, most of them will say yes. Some of them say no. But I don't even offer my program to the people who I'm saying no to. That's that's why you will find my uh, dog is now woofing. Buddy, buddy, come and say hello. Come on, there's my boy. So, take a few moments. Again, if you're if you're watching this on the replay, take a few moments to think about how you can go about celebrating when someone says no to you. Yeah. This is something I've put in front of Harold a few times and he's still sitting there looking confused by it. Yeah. And actually, believe it or not, I didn't, I didn't want to chime in until you were done. Um, I uh -huh. was thinking about chiming in. Um, there's, there's a portion in our, in our group where um, uh, we discuss the outreach uh -huh. and, what I'm learning after, you know, going out so much is that there are different levels. Um, mm -hmm. And that's even before we get to that slide. It's uh, it's the overture. It's the follow up. It's like a whole little module just to mm -hmm. get that call going. And then mm -hmm. you get to the next level of that's kind of where I am right now. I'm just perfecting that. So. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's but but there's when someone when when someone says no, it's really important to know that every single no brings you closer to a yes. Exactly. Yeah. This is exactly. something I've said to you lots of times. Yeah, and that's, and that's yeah. why we've got that little box in there about tracking your customer interactions, because right, if you right. if you track through like the big numbers, all of the outreaches you do, it gradually becomes narrower and narrower. That's the what that's right. where you 100%. get this, this term of the funnel. Yeah. So right, a sales right. funnel is you reach out to loads of people. Some of them respond. Some of them are a good fit for you. A few are ready to talk about it now and a couple are ready to buy. Yeah. And that's yeah. where the, that concept 100%, of the sales 100%. funnel comes in. So let's go a little bit further with this. So the next slide this is where I'm going to share one of my personal trade secrets. I approach every new client um, in these three stages, awareness, connection, and commitment, right? Because you only get one chance at converting a lead. And if you fluff it up, you fluff it up. And that's pretty much the only opportunity you're going to get. Yeah. Because when someone really says no, they really say no. And every single lead has a cost. Whether that cost is the time that you spent finding them, reaching out to them, sending them examples, asking their, answering their questions, all that kind of stuff. So the first stage of my personal funnel is to create awareness. And it sounds all fluffy bunny rabbits, but it's really not. It's literally just having that person out there aware of my name and that I'm a coach. Nothing more. 
not what kind of coach, none of that. Yeah. Just Tanya as a coach. Which means that some of my content is really short, really snappy. Some of it is marked with expletives. Some of it isn't. Yeah. But once I've created that awareness, I can then avoid that hamster wheel of frantic and continuous um, social media butterfly bullshit. I hate it. So once I've created that awareness, I then get those people into a Facebook group where I can create a connection with them. I can tell them what I'm about, what I teach, why I teach it. Yeah. And then once once you realize, like I, I realize for myself, but you know, this says here, your effort has value and so do the leads. When you come at it equally as a power balanced partnership between the effort that you put in to coaching someone and the effort that someone else needs to put in in order to be successful as to what they want to get out of the coaching. Yeah, this is a two sided thing. You then don't. Or I don't I don't convert people from prospects into into clients. I make a mutual commitment with my client. Yeah. And it is just that it's a mutual commitment. My my coaching um, contract is like three and a half pages long. And it says all of the things in there that I commit to do. But it also requires commitment from the person that they're going to do the work. If someone comes to me and literally says, oh, I don't want to sign up for a program. I just I just need like a quick breathwork technique to stop myself feeling so nervous every time I go to work. Yeah, I'm the wrong coach. I'm the wrong coach for you. Yeah. Because any fool in his mother, I mean, Google for crying out loud. You can do a Google search for breathwork to remove anxiety. There's a lot of people that want done for you. So it's yeah, a different. Yeah. But it's it's yeah, it it's a that's another reason why I've invited you on here because what what you bring can be a really done for you thing. But yeah, I pretty much I am really not a done for you person. Yeah, you're with you, you're done with you. I'm a you're I'm together. a with you thing. I'm a I'm 100%. a I walk down the road next to you. The only difference is that on the journey that me and my clients go on together, yeah. I've got I've got a map and a toolkit. Yeah. They decide where we go. They decide what route. I mean, how many people out there? I'd love to have this in the comments, actually. Can you bang it in the comment? Um, sure. If you are the sort of person who you program your destination into your sat nav. And then every now and again, just because you feel like it, you go the wrong way. Just to mess with the sat nav. Am I the only person who does that? I, I, I do it on my bike all the time. <laughs> yeah. Just I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm I'm not going that way. I'm going this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like sometimes sometimes the, the sat nav will say, okay, join this main road, and I'll see this really big road coming up on the, you know, on the preview of the sat nav. And I'll go, yeah, but I don't want to go on the main road. So instead of instead of exiting in one place and going onto this main road, I I'll exit there and I'll just make this last minute. No, I'm going that way. And it's so much fun. So it tells you it tells you pull a does, U turn where you are and go back. It says yeah, yeah, and then funny. I just keep going in the wrong direction and I wait for it. <laughs> I wait for it. I I absolutely love that moment where it says um, recalculating your route or something. I love it. Reca it re recalibrating. Yes, recalibrating or <laughs> yeah, whatever it is doing. I I love it to do that. So take a minute again. Take another minute to figure out how you in your business, whatever your business is, whether you are selling dried flowers or if you're a cleaner or if you're a coach or if you're a plumber. Yeah. Look at how you create awareness. How do you get your name in front of your client? How do you connect with your client? Um, like a plumber, for instance, yeah, you can get you can get your name in front of them by um, putting a big sign thing on the side of your van. Yeah, that's how you create awareness. You're driving around. You've got this big advert on the side of your van. 
Yeah. But how do you connect with your potential clients? Yeah. One suggestion that I gave a local plumber, right, is that on the outside of his van, and he's got one now, it's brilliant. He's got this little like plastic pocket with a lid on it. And in the little plastic pocket, he's got these little flyers. But because when he drives along, this lid flaps up and down, right? And all the flyers come out the back, right? He didn't want to be done for littering. So what we've done is we've changed the little plastic holder so that it now goes onto the door and like locks down. And he only puts it on the back door of his van when he's got his van sat out someone's, outside someone's house. So he arrives, he picks up his little advertising packet walks around to the back of his van to open his van to get all his tools out and he just locks this little leaflet dispenser thing on the back of his van and he was amazed just how many people walking past on the school run or walking past going to the shop or you know walking past walking the dog yeah would stop and take a leaflet out of the back of the leaflet dispenser on his van. That's how he creates connection. Wow. And the moment someone phones him up and says, Baz, can you come around and do me a quote for whatever it is? Yeah. Doing quotes is something that he now considers more, the, more of a priority than actually doing the work. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. There's probably, you know, plumbers or plumbers wives out there watching this thinking, how can doing quotes be more important than doing the work? Yeah. The thing with doing quotes is doing quotes gets you the next job. And the next job. And guess what? The job after that. Yeah. When you go around and do a quote. For the, well, this, this plumber anyway, when this plumber goes around and, and does a quote, Sometimes he says, right, here's the quote and that price will be fixed for three months. And the, the customer quite often says, oh, well, that, that's really good. You know, when, when can you do it? And he goes, well, the reason why that price is fixed for three months is because I can't actually fit you in for like six, eight weeks. Yeah. That's how he's always got work. That's how he's always got income, because he has put connection ahead of commitment. He acknowledges that that connection is more important than actually turning up and doing the job. Even though when he's set to date, he does actually turn up and do the job. Yeah. What I'm saying is that he's created awareness. He creates connection and he creates commitment, but he does it in that order. He's also gaining um, credit by showing up and doing the quote. Just being there, yeah, presentable absolutely. Or, just by getting a yeah. lot of credit in that, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. That part. If I could chime in, absolutely, absolutely. Now, that's why the next three boxes on your worksheet, yeah, are awareness, connection, and commitment. Think about how you create awareness, how you create connection, and how you show your committedness, if that is such a word, to your clients, even before they are your client. Now, next bit, really important. This one slide, if you take away nothing else, right? Screenshot this right now. Take a picture of this right now. I believe I may have already emailed this slide to you, Harold, in a slightly different form. Um, but this is how I plan and manifest how my business runs. I have long-term goals and that's what that first box called dreams is all about so harold see if you can project yourself at least one year ahead yeah what's one thing that you would like to dream about could be well, the, new house new bike big holiday yeah i i, I don't know if big i'm I, I don't know if i'm a little different but just that, you know, scaling that income to that, you know, uh, you know, five figure range a month, like, mm. you know, that sort of covers a lot. <laughs> you know, that gets yeah, you. That's the, the that's the dream. That, that's the dream. Yeah, that gets you see, you that's a, that's a long term dream, and that's what I want you to write in that dreams box. Yeah, five figure a month income. 
That's your dream. Yeah. That dream is not the kind of thing that you can put a, an exact time on. Yeah. And that's why I want to change people's minds from goals being like five year goals and 10 year goals. And no, they're dreams. They're dreams. Yeah. Because in the um, second box down, that's where your goals go. And your goals are midterm plans. And this is six to 13 weeks. Yeah. So it's between a six week cycle or a three month chunk of time. That's where you build goals. And I would suggest that for a lot of people out there in business, the first goal they need to set for themselves is to be consistent. Remember, I talked a little bit earlier about just releasing my 36th episode. Yeah, that's my 36th radio show. That's commitment. That's me showing commitment to myself, to my business. Yeah. So what happened was around about February time, I made the commitment to myself. I set myself a goal, a one word goal, consistency. Yeah. And in the first six weeks, I did the radio show. In the next six weeks, I got serious with my content. Yeah. And now every week I churn out a radio show. I churn out all the content, including these workshops every single week, week after week, after week, after week, after week. And it's a habit. It's natural. If I wake up on Monday and this happened last week, not this week, but last week, um, I woke up on Monday and the content that I'd got planned for that week was like, uh, nope, don't want to do it. But because I'd been consistent and because I knew exactly what was expected, I created a whole week's worth of content in less than 20 minutes. Uh, chiming in, I think that's like, it's taken me a while to get there. I think that's the critical thing is the, um, is, is knowing exactly what to having that plan. If you know, mm. like when I started with you guys, um, it took a while. I was, you know, doing 15 things, chasing all kinds that we discussed shiny object. And then over mm -hmm. time with your nurturing and wisdom and patience and omen as well, I, you know, I still get those texts and I want to jump, but I bring myself back. And you're just mm -hmm. like, you know, you have to do three, four things a day. And that's what you have to be on. You cannot yeah. be. You have to be you know, on that path of consistency. Yeah. 100%. So anybody who's watching this video, um, if you can't think of something to put as a midterm plan, a six week or an, or a 13 week target, right? Write the word consistency loud and proud in that box. Yeah. Pick a really bright flipping color. Yeah. Go searching for a color pen right now. I'll talk. It's OK. I'll wait. Yeah. And write consistency. Because. Once you've once you've got an idea, once you've got a dream, consistency is the only thing that's going to get you there. It's the how only did, thing. It doesn't, did, all of these did, other yeah. tools and faffy techniques are complete and utter bullshit. If you don't do whatever it is you're going to do consistently. Huh? If you don't you follow also, up consistently, you also level up. I'm learning as you, as you focus on less things and you get better at them, you, mm -hmm. you improve, you level up instead of, you know, what's that old adage chasing two rabbits, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Which rabbit are you going to catch? Neither of them. That's the, <laughs> no, no, Cause no, the moment no, no. you take your eyes off one and go running after the other one, the one's going to disappear. And then you've got to look around that to see where that one, is. and you're going to be in the field with no rabbits. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So third box down in your planning and manifestation section, every Monday or day of your choosing, make a plan, manifest your plan. There's a lot of talk out there about um, law of attraction. Yeah. I love law of attraction, but it's it's just too out there for my brain. My, my brain can't cope with that. So what I do is instead of manifesting abundance, yeah, I manifest the plan that's going to get me abundance. And I gave this example to someone literally a couple of days ago, right? 
Imagine that your goal, your dream is the view from the top of that mountain. If you spend your entire time looking up while you're climbing the mountain, how many times do you think you're going to fall flat on your face on your way up that mountain? Yeah. The way to climb a mountain is one step at a time looking at your feet. So my plans are literally every week I start a new plan. I start a new sheet, a new plan, a new set of priorities. But the first priority is always consistency. What did I do last week that worked? Repeat it. What did I do last week that worked? Repeat it. What do I do last week that worked? And seriously, just repeat, 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 repeat. Get a system and repeat. Get a system and repeat. And if you if you narrow that down to taking one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, yeah, all of a sudden you're going to run out of steps to take and the view will be there right in front of you because you've been consistent. So take the time once a week to manifest a plan that's going to get you to your dreams. Yeah. A weekly plan that contributes to your midterm plan. That midterm plan is what contributes to your dream. Yeah. But you've got to look down, take one step at a time. Right. Step number four. Follow the plans that you make. If you're going to take yourself out of the present moment to project yourself into next week and plan what you're going to do, respect the time that you've put into that plan by actually following the plan. Yeah. And I'm actually going to dictate the words that I want you to write in that box that says your promise to yourself. If you're not doing this on paper, Harold, I want you to pick up a pen and write this down. You ready? Yep. I state your name. I state your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Tanya Swarbrick. Promise to. Devote time to my future in plans and to respect myself enough to follow my plans. So let's both of us, both of us, because we're here together, let's both of us say that out loud. You ready? Deep breath. I, I Tanya Swarbrick, Harold, promise, promise to, devote to devote time for my future. Time for my future in plans. In plans and to respect And time myself, to respect myself enough, enough to, to follow, follow my, my plans. plans. That's, that's Can it. I add something? Yeah, I think I did. I don't um, know. I don't care. So it's anyway, just... everybody out there. I promise to devote time to my future in plans and to respect myself enough to follow my plans. I've noticed that um, um, things happen. People, you know, calls, unexpected things. And what I try and do now is like I, I really plan the day well with the steps. And what I'm trying to do, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not there yet. But um, at the end of the day, I try and review and see where, like, if a call came in, a friend or whatever, I don't mind giving a few minutes, but sometimes you get waylaid into some project that's not on. That's not on the plan. I, it's not on the plan. And you, ha you have to know. And then I replan mm. the next morning, you know? Yeah. It's a whole other yeah. story. With, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's, in, it's critical. In Gladiator critical. Mastermind, what we do on a Monday in Gladiator Mastermind is we look back at our wins and back at our lessons, and then we plan from that point forward so that's how that works in gladiator mastermind but what i'm going to give you now is a couple of tools a couple of my favorite tools yeah um first one is the pomodoro technique this is traditionally 25 minutes of work five minutes of something else personally i do it a bit different i do 40 minutes of work and 20 minutes of something else because I've discovered after years of practicing and fiddle faffing about that 25 minutes is not long enough for my brain to fully engage in the task. 
and five minutes is not enough for me to fully unhook from it. Yeah? So I do 40 minutes on, 20 minutes off. When I'm doing things like this, like a, like a workshop, um, this workshop is, is timed to take 45 minutes to an hour. And the next lump of time in my diary is a 30 minute break. Yeah. So I always plan in work and break. Um, you can look that up. Most smart speakers will do it for you. You can set up your smart speakers in apps to to do your, you know, work timing or whatever you want to call it. And then, it, it, you know, you can tell it to do whatever you do. It's all really clever. Um, and the next one is time blocking. Time blocking creates balance and prevents workout. But before we start talking about time blocking, right, here's my favorite tool of all. The not to do list. Stuff that you are not gonna do. And the first one on that list is directly from my experience working with Harold. Yeah. Avoid shiny object syndrome. Shiny objects, yeah, mess you the fuck up, don't they? Yeah. And and thing is, it's so it's so easy. You know, you you're scrolling through the internet, or you know, a, a message will pop up, or something will jump up in your screen saying, you know, follow these five steps for instant business success. Yeah, it's just shiny. Of, Look away. <laughs> just a point. Just a point of order. There mm -hmm. are with you or Omid. There are some people that are amazing. There are some techniques, multiple that are amazing. But once you've got in and committed to something, stay with that until you get that right before you're ready to hop to the next yeah. thing or whatever, you know, because yeah. you, you you perfect one thing. The problem is that everyone wants our attention. You're working on something. It's making progress. But the other guy says, hey, I could do it. And you're like, oh, now you're you're fit. you yeah. got to stay on that one task. It's the two rabbits thing again, isn't yeah. it? You, yeah. 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 You, you chase I, one I it... rabbit, you'll catch the rabbit. Yes, I did it three or four times while I was starting. And like, I, I was even in one module and I jumped to another and it just, and then you have other people asking for your attention. You have to, they all have to be blocked. Mm. They all have to be turned off. You can make a note in your book and say, you know mm. what? This is what I'm doing. In three months, I'd like to look at that. Take a day, look at, but if you're bouncing between, it is very hard. Very, very even, challenging. Even with um, a life coaching um thing like i do yeah um yes sometimes i get asked questions or a, a friend or a relative will come to me with a problem right and on some days i can just drop everything and do whatever it yeah, is they, sure, they want. Sure. Or, or spend two hours on the phone with them sorting it out yeah but there are other days when i can't and when i respect myself enough to say to that person look today I really can't. But you know what? Next week, I'm doing a load of videos, ask, answering loads of people's questions. I'll make sure that I do a video just for you answering that question. Yeah. Something like that. You, you're not saying no. You're yeah, just you're saying, not saying no. Right. You're That's saying my point, time is, now yeah, yeah. is too right valuable. Now. Yeah. Because I made my plan. I'm sticking to it. Uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and, and, See, I and have it's my very, plan. Let me just, it's very easy when you're I'll in let you office. into a trade secret here. Uh oh, Harold. okay, cool. Right. My plan. Wow. Yeah. Quick flash. My plan sits down on my desk and the daily part of it, which is across the bottom, which says tipping it in so it shades. Yeah. This is this is like the week's plan. Okay. These are this is my win, my lesson, where am I stuck? Right. And what I do with this is my my win, I celebrate. Yeah. My lesson, I think, okay. Let's learn from that when it comes to making this, right? And then where am I stuck? This is where I'm going to ask questions. Then I make my plan for the week. Um, everything's color coded. So blue stuff is my weekly task. Yellow stuff is things that I do with my VA. Um, green is usually like the, the weekly project. Pink is what I do for myself, right? And then I turn all of this into a daily plan. And that sits on my desk underneath my keyboard. But that daily bit, yeah, sits, sits like that on my desk. That daily bit is always visible. Every time I look down, I can see it. It's there, yeah? And then off to one side, I have a notepad. And this, I've started to call my shiny object pad. 
Because whenever a shiny object crops up and it's like, oh, shit, I've got to send that email to such and such. Write it down on the pad. Yeah. Don't drop everything and do the thing. Yeah. Because today I'll do that thing. If I get everything else done first, then I'll do that thing. If that thing is still written down tomorrow morning and I've got time to do it tomorrow morning, I'll do it tomorrow morning. I also plan my weeks so that Monday is full, Tuesday is full, Wednesday is full, Thursday is full, Friday normally so empty. Yeah. Yeah. Friday, yeah. I like to keep empty ish. Saturday is my official day off. And Sunday, I start churning through what's going to happen next week. But I only do it mentally. It's not until Monday morning that I sit down and make it happen. So anyway, that's a, a little bit of a there, there was a um an uh, insight could, into my plans. You could look at um there's history and a lot of people commented on it, but there was a one of the I think it was one of the university rectors or director, whatever you called them back in the 1800s, 1900s, and he I don't know if it was Andrew Carnegie or one of the guys he went in. They said they were having trouble, you know, staying, you know, getting things done. He said, could you help us? He said, yeah. He wrote a six or, or some kind of small uh, letter. And he says, try this. Let me know whatever it is. Send me what you think it's worth. Uh, mm -hmm. You got a check for $25,000 for like a minute visit in like 19 or 1899. And what it was was like, write a list of the top five things you have to do. And start on one and don't go to two until you finished one. That was like yeah. what it was. Just stay on point, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I used to run my to-do lists in terms of I had this sort of continuous to-do list. Yeah. I would I would write out a to-do list. Then I would pick one thing that I really didn't want to do, but knew I had to do. And I'd do that first. So, yeah, do something horrible first. Then I'd do a few things that I enjoyed. Anything that I didn't complete that day was then written at the top of the next day and so on. So I had like this, this it was called my logbook and it was just a continuous, unachievable, uncompletable. You didn't ask the question about that stuck part. You yeah. wouldn't, you know, I'm, I'm going through the same thing right now with, um, with, uh, we have a thing called audition by chat and, mm -hmm. You know, I grasp like the broad strokes, but I'm just now, after a few months, I'm really getting into the nitty gritty. And there's certain parts of the training where you, oh, that's what that means. And no, it means, you know, no, it something. doesn't. It, it means yeah. something quite different. Yeah. yeah but let's, let's get back to this not to do list. Okay. Because um, the, the next one is don't flip from system to system. Pick a thing and do it. This is what Harold was saying just before we switched it off. And finally, um, this is something that I say to a lot of people. I've said it to Harold as well, but stay in your lane. Yeah. Don't worry too much about what that person over there is doing, even if they're in the same niche as you, even if they're in the same business of, as you, you know, about this plumber. Yeah. This this plumber is probably doing the same kind of plumbing job as most other small man in a van single person businesses yeah but what he does he does his way yeah and he doesn't give a monkeys what anybody else is doing and that's why his business works that's why he gets up in the morning looking forward to his work because he does it his way he doesn't let anybody else tell him what to do so that's why stay in your lane is is such a brilliant thing now time blocking and this was you know, it, it, I was being devious, Harold. When I invited you on this, it's because I wanted you to go through this time blocking exercise again. Because I know what you're like. We do things twice. We do things twice. We make a headway. Yeah. And it's not until we do something the third time or the fourth time that it really starts to work. So it took get, you. It took you a long time to get me to where I am now. But I'm actually. Um, I don't know per se if I've you know, totally bl bl blocked, but those activities have to get done. And some days I get them done faster, some days slower, but I don't, my day doesn't like the other parts of the day don't start until that blocking time yeah. um, are done. And there, there are a few simple activities, but without those, I'd have no, you know, but they have to be done every yeah. day. So yeah, they're blocked. And that's, that's, we've got the, the top part 
of this of page three is for you to go through again, Harold, with everybody else who's watching these simple steps. The first thing that you put into your diary is your non working hours. For me, wow, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, your wow. non working hours. When you're figuring out how to, you know, how to run a business, how to be in a business, the most important thing, really, the most important thing is when you are not going to be working. Yeah. For me, that's 8 p.m. until 8 in the morning. I don't answer my phone. I don't look at my email. When it comes to 8 p.m., I have a thing pop up on my phone. It, it's, an, it's an alarm. Yeah. Alarm comes up on my phone and it says end of working day. And then wow. I close this, I close my laptop, I walk away. Commit to yourself to respect yourself enough. Because if you don't respect yourself, no one else is going to. If you treat yourself like shit, everybody else is going to. Seriously, I'm 56. I've learned this the hard way. Point number two. So first, decide what your non-working hours are and put that in your diary, in your Google calendar, however you want to do it. Yeah. But it should be the same period of time each and every single day. Second, your daily non-negotiables. For me, walking the dog in the morning, walking the dog in the afternoon, um, moving my body. I do, I do flexibility and strengthening exercises most days, not all day. You know, not every single day. I do the most days. Cooking decent food is something that's a daily non-negotiable for me. Then, after you've got that in there, then you put in the regular commitments that fuel you. Yeah, The things that lift you up. For me, it's things like my weekly radio show. That commitment goes in. It's bolted in. It doesn't matter how much you plead with me or how much you offer to pay me. Yeah. Between one o'clock and four o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon, it's not happening. Because between one o'clock and two o'clock, I am settling my brain, sorting out my, my own energies, ready to go live at two o'clock. Yeah. I go live for a whole hour. And then at three o'clock, I quickly, this is literally the same every week. At three o'clock, I finish the show. I go to the loo. I then download my show onto a, a pen drive. I then upload the show onto Mixcloud so that it can be listened to again on demand. I then do a bit of faffing about with the website and links and getting the file in the right place. And then I come home and I'm usually home by about half past three. But just in case something goes a bit were with the technology side of things, I always say that from one till four, I'm out on a Wednesday. I'm out doing something I want to do. And then all of the remaining time that's left in your diary after you've put in your non-working time, your daily non-negotiables and your regular commitments that fuel you. Yeah. I mean, that could be for you, Harold. It could be that you have a three hour bike ride once a week. Yeah. It's the regular things that you want to do regularly, but only things that you enjoy, only things that fuel you. Then number four, that's when your business and the rest of your life comes in. While you're planning your business activities and the rest of your life, yeah, you're going to notice that things are going to start to get a little bit full. So it's at that point you think, okay, I've been going full on for say, I mean, in Omid's case, bless his heart, he'll he'll notice that he'll go full on for like 15 days. And then he goes, shit, I haven't taken a break. So he has a long weekend. Yeah. Other people do it differently. I do it. One, one day every week is a non-negotiable day off. Saturday is my day off. Saturday, I, I spend my Saturdays um, helping my mum, cutting the lawn, going for a long walk, repotting houseplants, you know. Sometimes I go to the radio station and pre-record mad shows like an 80s remix 
or a 90s remix or i'll do a search on google for the um you know the the top 25 most popular hits in the 50s yeah and then i'll find all those children's go to the radio station record a show and then when the station manager's got a gap he'll put a show in it yeah so i do all those kind of mad things on my day off well um, also on my day off, I, I sometimes do things like catch up on laundry, but you know, I, I live in, in, you know, first world. So I have this lovely little thing in the kitchen that I just shovel my laundry in the front of, and it does it for me. Yeah. So no longer do we have to set aside, you know, Thursdays for laundry. Don't let the clutter of your life overtake you. Just make sure you plan in your business, your life, your days off. And then, then you start looking forward in your life to those, to those dreams, to those complete breaks where you go to Mauritius for a month. Yeah. But you know that you can only afford to do that once you've done everything else consistently. And number seven, this is almost my top tip, actually. They're all really important, all of those steps, but having everything in one place and then promising yourself to check in with that one place before you say yes to anything else. So when you get that mad phone call that says, um, oh, can you, I've, I've just decided to have a really spontaneous beach party and we're all going to take our trucks down to the beach and and we'll, we'll see you at such and such a place at seven o'clock next Tuesday. Yeah. Check in your diary first. You've only got one place to look. Yeah. Before you say yes, check in your diary first, because what have you done? You've taken all of this time and all of this effort to create a plan. And you've and you've promised to respect yourself enough. Yeah. Respect yourself enough. To follow the plans that you make. And we're nearly there. Step change. These last three things are designed for coaches in particular. Right? And they're a little bit abstract, but when you hear them, you'll understand. I'm sure you will. You do not need to know how to build a staircase to help someone up it. Take that literally. Yeah. Imagine yourself on a staircase. You don't know how to build a staircase. Well, Harold might. I kind of know roughly. With the, you know, with the zigzaggy stringer thing and the steps and the rises and how it's all got to be the right size, otherwise you trip over. Yeah, all I, that I stuff. Just, I just mess up four or five of them and then get it right. So that's just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny, actually, because the last person I spoke to along those lines of, you know, you must know how to build a staircase. You're a builder. He said... Um, he said to me, yeah, I, I built a few and they all went horribly, horribly wrong and now I employ someone. Yeah, it's a just professional. Just does staircases. Who <laughs> just does staircases? Bless him. Yeah. So you don't need to know how to build a staircase to help someone up it, and you don't need a complete or perfect program to start making a difference, to start making real impact in your niche. Right. Harold does not have a program. He's got all of this amazing stuff in his head. Yeah. He looked at my website for about 15 seconds, gave me four or five really, really interesting pieces of input. I have changed my website and all of a sudden it's producing inquiries. Whereas it never has before. And you know what the main one was, right? It's putting like my target person right at the top of my website. You know, are you this clickable thing? The, the, people's eyes go to, oh, that's me. Click. Where does it take them? Off to a contact form, and boom. Yeah, that's... I've had that. Web I've had that freaking website for like four years. Never had an inquiry come through it ever, ever, until I put that thing at the top of the thing, and 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 I know it's only three, yeah, but three inquiries is three hundred. Once... Well, it's more than three hundred times nothing, isn't it? Well, once once you get traffic there, the right traffic, it's going to, you know, yeah. we, we can look at it as well. I actually had a friend 
in the insurance business. He told me I never got it. And he said, let me look at your website. And he was adamant. It's never going to work. So I couldn't push. But if you do the little changes, it's yes. One kooky little change. But I mean, seriously, one kooky wooky little change. Yeah. Yeah. And there's and there's something. There's, so, there's crazy but, but stuff. These, I mean, but the, the three things that you need to be are you need to be what you teach. So, Harold, your website needs to in rock, man. Yeah. When you build a website, it's going to have to be immaculate. You have to enjoy yeah. what you sell. Because if you don't get a kick out of it, you're not going to do it for long. It, 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 in the coaching, yes. Yeah, yeah. You have to have, or or in, in the service you have. I, I'm all about, my, my, my brother used to say, I'm from Missouri, show me. If it converts... It, it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a, yeah, absolutely. Know. And and yeah. this is this is a great thing about both you and I. We're both really, really down to earth, authentic people. Yeah. But the importance yeah, that... is that once you once you are what you teach, once you enjoy what you sell, once you embody what you're doing, yeah, you can then integrate it into everybody else just by existing on the planet. Because only you decide what success looks like. For me, what success looks like is three things. I want to be able to pay my bills. I want to be able to walk my dog. And I want to help humanity one person at a time, if that's what it takes. And my mission statement, I wrote that four years ago. Yeah, It's only changed slightly. Point number one is now I want to be able to pay my bills without stressing. Yeah, Because I used to have to juggle money. Yeah, I don't juggle money anymore. Yeah, I want to be able to pay my bills without stressing. Secondly, I want to be well enough to walk my dog. So it's not just walking the dog. I want to be well enough to walk my dog. And thirdly, I want to have an impact in humanity. And like I said right at the beginning of this, my definition of success is going to be very different from someone like Tony Robbins, for instance. He likes to make impact, but he makes impact thousands of people at a time. That's what rocks his boat. Yeah. And go for it, mate. The world probably needs another couple of Tony Robbins. But that's not what my definition of success is. My definition of success is to enjoy my job, walk my dog, pay my bills and have an impact. Funny, funny thing about that is that when you lower your, I'm not going to say expectations, we all have, but when you lower your, you know, just a little humbler, like I think a lot more comes to you as well in many areas. Mm. When Instead of like, I have to make a billion dollars and be king of the world and get a jet in it. When you just set some realistic, you start to scale, like, you get one above that, one above that, but that's a that's a lifetime of learning to get. To that, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And the, and the thing is that, you know, I mean, I've, I've said to people, I don't want to be the next Tony Robbins. I don't want to be the next Oprah Winfrey. I I just want to have a life changing impact on the people that I have an impact on. I don't want my impact to be like you know someone flicking the nose and having an annoying reminder. I want the kind of impact that I make. Um, in my niche and in this kind of side niche, as it were, with the, with the Gladiator Mastermind, the, the impact that I have made, and I'm going to say it out loud, right? The impact that I have made on Harold, right, is going to make the difference in his business between fluffing about for the next 20 years and getting precisely nowhere, yeah, much, and yeah. <laughs> being focused for the next five years and achieving something, yeah? That's impact. That's real impact. And if I've had to say the same thing to Harold 15 times, that's fine. Minimum, minimum, minimum. That's fine. You're also, you're also going to have impact on the people that I serve yeah. and help because yeah. hopefully as the business scales, they're getting the benefit of it rather than me chasing every little nook exactly. and cranny that or yeah, shiny every thing. little so, shiny yeah, it's object. A big, it's a, it's a, it's a, what's the word? It has a ripple effect. Yeah, it's a ripple effect. Extensive, it? yeah, it's a ripple yeah, effect. It's pretty cool. I mean, there's there's other ripple effects that I've had. One of one of my favorite clients is a foster mum. And she still comes back to me now and says, 
oh, I just did such and such an exercise with one of my foster kids. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't just train her. I didn't just support her in breaking free from people pleasing. She's now strong enough to know that when, when the social services system isn't working for one of her kids, she's now strong enough to stand up to that social worker and say, no, that's not the way it's going to happen. Not for him. She used to be so focused on pleasing the social worker who would come to her home and do an inspection. Yeah. That something got lost in the translation. But now she stands up to people. She's stronger and she's doing more just because I've taught her to value herself. Um, and I think that's probably where I'm going to leave it for today because this awesome. workshop with Harold's fabulous contributions has Thank gone on much longer me, than I thought it was. It was, it was, a, it was yeah, really guest appearance. Thank guest you for appearance. my first guest appearance. So. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Stuff. Yeah, Thank one you. one day we'll have to have a proper chat about what it's what it's like in in your world, and um, maybe we'll make it a, a radio show. Podcast, show, whatever. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, all of my podcasts start off as radio shows. Wow. I'd like I'd like to have one one day too, because I a lot of times I um people ask for help and I and I help I show them everything. They're not I can't really set up an account because you know, whatever, but I, I'm able to help them and then mm. uh, you know, I, I think there's value to that. I can't help everybody, but I could share like a little. So that's absolutely. That's well, anyway, nice. okay. back to my audience. I hope you've enjoyed this workshop. If you've enjoyed it, tell everybody else. If you have not enjoyed it, tell me. If you've got an idea of something that you want me to do on a workshop, all you've got to do is shout. Um, and if you think that there's something missing from one of the workshops you've attended before, please let me know. Because at the end of the day, I'm here to serve you. Awesome. Thanks. Tony. Bye for now.